Hello, this is my Human Design System Incarnation Cross Analysis. My name is Lavina Archers. You can see that my design is a projector aura type. I am an advisor career type. My profile is the 3-5 martyr heretic pioneering messenger is another way we could say that. My authority is solar plexus as an emotional decision making process. And the incarnation cross is the right angle cross of contagion one. So let's dive into my cross and profile life purpose costume of fulfillment. Here you can see just the mandala wheel with my right angle cross of contagion one. The incarnation cross personality sun gate is in the gate 30. So this leads to my life's work being fulfilled through the initiation of mind. And my life purpose overview is that you, Lavina, are designed to be an innocent instrument of fate who can step in and unexpectedly change the fate of others through experience, discovery, and learning. Using your powers of creative drive to objectively communicate your recognition of what is inspiring and your well of emotional depth and experiences, you can move others with the call towards empowerment. Your initiation of mind into the world can stimulate others to fantasize about what could be. Using your imagination to communicate desires for new adventures and experiences can feel incredibly sweet when you're clear about sharing your feelings. Remember life is a journey that is not about the destination, so much as the relationships that are successfully committed to along the way. Use your powers of discrimination and attunement to frequency to lead when a formal invitation comes along that you can put your energy and desires behind to help others succeed. You are a 3-5, another way we could say the martyr mm, personality costume is being a determined discoverer or a pioneer. Your fifth line body is designed to be heretical. Remember to have practicality in your marketing and messaging as you put things out into the world. Now, a 3-5 is a personal destiny profile. Your focus is on self-exploration in this life. Your focus is on facing your own personal challenges in life. You're here to do research and explore and gain new perspectives. As far as the 3-5 is concerned, you're part of the research and development costumes in our 12 profiles. So it's all about your own personal destiny. Now this personal destiny as a 3-5 is being a potent agent for change. Third lines are change makers. You are determined to understand and discover what works and what doesn't work, as well as stand up, take charge, and promote and deliver something new and practical that does work. Others will naturally look to you for innovative, practical solutions to fix it or lead, guide, potentially save them, especially in times of crisis. You are resilient, adaptable, and mutative learning through trial and error what doesn't work in the physical world. You are constantly learning from the school of hard knocks, so don't get discouraged if you don't get it right away or make mistakes. This is an important part of your process. See everything as an opportunity to learn something new. You are literally and figuratively bumping into life as life is bumping into you, making you a wealth of experiential wisdom. It is that wisdom that gives you the power to transform yourself and others in this world. A 3-5 personal destiny has the costume that is consciously adaptable. Your behavioral identity is being someone who learns through the school of hard knocks, discovering what's not working, and being willing to stand up, take the heat, and let others know. Your projected attitude in life is designed to be rebellious or a revolutionary in bringing forth change. Your limited perspective or the way that you listen to others is taking others in through being naturally pessimistic. 
It is that layer of pessimism when you're listening to someone that protects you from making all the mistakes. Your aspired to role, meaning your creative self-expression, is your mind is designed to sustain creative work. Your bonding strategy, the way that you make and break bonds with others, is through this mm, en encounter with them and then release. It's like a catch and release, my mind is wanting to tell you. You know, make and break bonds. That's your bonding strategy. When you let go of those things that do not work, or when you just take a break, you're able to come back into that bond from a different perspective. Once you've gotten out of the bond, you can see what it was like being in the bond and remake bonds in a more mm, healthful way, more successful way. Your security strategy is your mind and the way that it operates is it moves between the uncertainty of awareness. This is through bonds made and bonds broken. That's your conscious personality's way of attuning to its personal destiny. Now on the body side, your unconscious body is designed to be universalizing things from a practical standpoint. So your unconscious nature is being someone who can get the word out about different, new, and innovative practical solutions through fixing and solving problems, bringing forth some kind of heretical mm, stance on empowering, mm, especially business. It's a important way for you to fulfill your unconscious aspect of your life's work. This unconscious attitude is that you are someone other people look to for leadership or guidance, especially in times of crisis. It's just your genetic inherent innate potential. Your unconscious memory or your way of unconsciously selecting, remembering is by being the savior. You will remember when you are able to rescue someone with a practical solution. Again, especially in times of crisis. Your unconscious body's direction has a deep unconscious attractiveness and has the energy to attract society. The unconscious bonding strategy is being able to alternate through seducing or being seduced by others as part of your bonding strategy. This is about the way that your body mm, unconsciously expresses itself. It's the quality inherent within your voice, especially, and your leadership. Your unconscious connection with humanity is that your body alternates between selflessness and selfishness as a way to connect with the collective. So it's about being able to recognize what is most practical as far as a good mm, way of engaging your energy with life. Now to go even further, more specifically to your life purpose overview, as a right angle cross of contagion, your personality gate sun is the 30 and earth is a 29. The design gate 14 is the sun and the eight is the earth. Now this is your focus, which is the quarter of initiation purpose fulfilled through mind. This is the realm of Alcyone. So Ross says that you are the instrument of fate. As a cross of contagion person, you are very valuable for redirecting others. That's your worth. You're here to get others to fall into things. You're here to misdirect others so that they can really see things. You are an embodiment of those forces like fate that shake others on their way. Imagine when you are conscious, aware, awake, and living out your true nature. Imagine what kind of impact you can have on the other. Quote, everything about the abstract person is to get to that place of answer. The answer that's there in the 35th gate that says, hey, you made it, baby, progress. You managed to get through the experience. You survived. Now you can reflect. Everything is wonderful, says Ra Uruhu. To continue, he says the tragedy of the 30 is it's emotional. It's abstract emotional. There's more hope and pain in this gate than anywhere in the design. Contagion itself works through hope or pain. One of the things about the experiential way is that not 
all of us can experience everything, obviously. And yet, at the same time, we have this vast intellectual curiosity about the possibilities of life. So it's interesting for us to read about certain lives and what has been accomplished in certain lives. And there we get the net results of the fates getting in the way. When he talks about your 3-5 profile, he says it's often a sour interference. One sours on something rather than being attracted to the sweetness of something. In other words, contagion works in two ways. You can pull people away from something or you can push them towards something. One is to fill them with sourness. The other is to tantalize them with sweetness. Now this really resonates with the fact that you are a projector or a type as well. As you know, bitterness, sourness, or sweetness and success are the two signposts of you operating in alignment. Now you're in the process, the entering phase of your Coronian phase, which is about being a one, three cross of explanation. And what Ross says about you being in a three, five in your Coronian phase and awake, you're the most useful beings we can have. He says they're really good. They are able to discern truly what doesn't work, and they're able to universalize it for the benefit of others. They make fabulous scientists. They make great researchers. They are very, very important to us. So most three fives get into trouble materially. There is absolutely no guarantee. This is just the fates playing with you. Three fives bring to anyone who is on any path. Their interference is a negative interference. Again, this is not about whether this is good or bad. It's not so much about people who are going to redirect you to something as much as they're going to redirect you away from something. So when three fives do have their moment of influence, of impact, impact is a great uh, fifth line quality keynote, the thing to recognize is that because the way they offer is not safe, third line, they're bound to get into trouble and they will be blamed. This is why it's so important with your design never to promise anything, particularly materially on the material plane. Always enter into things through mutual recognition and invitation, formal invitation. Wait further for the emotional clarity about what to commit your energy to so that you can learn the wisdom of succeeding on this life, in this path, in as your purpose of being a cross of contagion or contagiating other people, infecting other people with the way that your mind works. Your perspective is going to be critical. Share your personal perspective on what does and doesn't work and sell strategies for how to deal with what fate throws in the way. Now let's dive deeper into the incarnation cross. This is the generality of the line values that you have. Gate 30 is the clinging fire, the gate of feelings. This is freedom recognized as an illusion and limitation accepted as a fate. The third line reads resignation. And this is not about being downtrodden, but it's like shrugging the shoulders and going, oh well, you're learning about the acceptance of what is in this life. You have the awareness and manifestation of the law of regeneration. This is about the laws of karma, reincarnation, and resurrection. You are designed to emanate the feeling to accept what is. On the flip side, there is this tendency by its very knowledge to encourage or avoid despair. Remember hope to pain. You have the positive or negative feelings which come with the acceptance of what is. And this is how your mind is designed to contagiate or infect others with what you're broadcasting in this life. Now where that energy is designed to be way more specific to you and the nature of your personality is here on this slide. We're going to talk about gate 30 and its characteristics. 
So you are destined to learn from experience that acting without clarity leads to chaotic emotional situations. The fates teach us that life is not what we expect it to be. Rather, it is what we allow it to be. So you are designed to give people strategies to handle what fate throws in their way. Your experiences are conceived from a core pioneering desire to lead that is then fated to meet life's actual experiences of the highs and lows. Your desire to share your feelings and to preach what not to do can feel like an obsessive hunger that influences your interactions until it is satiated. So your key is the clarity with which you enter into any experience. Remember, you cannot control outcomes. Just accept the journey and let go of any expectations. Balance for you comes through surrendering to and accepting what is so that you need not fear what fate may bring or feel pressured to chase after fantasies that are not for you. By accepting your place in the larger pattern of life, your feelings, your deep desires can lead to a sense of security about your life's purpose that you then share with others. Now, where this core essence of your light of incarnate of purpose is shining, is designed to be grounded into the world, is through gate 29, the abysmal. This is the gate of perseverance. The deep within the deep. Persistence despite difficulties has its inevitable rewards. The third line is called evaluation. Learning in this context properly assessed in action. So it reads, despite the urge and cost of an action, the knowledge that it is sometimes better to fight another day. This brings you the power to wait. On the flip side, it's a preference for withdrawal and principle with little regard for effect. It's also the inability to make commitments. It's the power of caution. So you can see how you're here to balance the light of your desires is through waiting and caution, not blindly saying yes to every little thing. So more specifically, these gate 29 characteristics, what grounds you is to align to correctly committing your energy to strategically lead from a place of emotional clarity with a sense of security in committing to new adventures of discovery. When you reply yes, you're committing your energy to something or someone new, and you can persevere through whatever your cycle of discovery brings, trying and trying again. Aligned commitments with the right people who recognize your dedication supports you in reaching your fullest potential for sharing new discoveries. You may be conditioned by an over-eagerness to say yes to anything and overcommit. So be very careful where and how you commit your energy. When you make the right commitments, you might display a single-minded energy designed to help you through very difficult or even challenging circumstances. And once you say yes, it's important to let go of any expectations. Bitterness or resentment are signposts for you to break the bond with a commitment, either temporarily or permanently. You never know until the end of an adventure where your commitment may take you. So enjoy witnessing the ride and the wisdom of the energy resource. Now your unconscious design sun, this is your core genetic inherited light, what you're broadcasting inconsistently through wisdom in working with others. This gate 14 is called possession in great measure. It's the gate of power skills. The accumulation and retention of power through skilled interaction, coupling grace with control. Fifth lines may show up arrogant. It's called arrogance. So the ever-present risk inherent in positions of power is something that you will learn about in this life. You have it fixed in the quality of innate dignity. 
Your innate dignity is a key to power. Sometimes either transits or people may show with the flip side, and that is a dissatisfaction with the gifts of others that creates feelings of superiority. Innate net recognition of those without power, fueling the illusion of superiority. Now this is a leadership quality. Fifth line qualities are always about leadership. So let's dive deeper. Gate 14's characteristics for you hold a core embodiment of purpose that is designed to advise others. This gate is the engine that jump starts any business, either small or large. You are designed to have the potential to empower the direction of individuals or a company through the distribution of available resources. You are designed to have the stamina and capacity to sustain long hours of creative work doing something that you absolutely love. Now that is only through recognition, mutual invitation, and clarity. Be sure to outsource or delegate and honor your body's energy levels and your moods. But when you feel that you love what you do, you have the potential to generate great wealth and power. The resources you create or have access to are not necessarily for your own use, but rather yours to manage in order to empower others. To protect your resources from misuse or abuse by others, it is important to pay attention to what you are recognized and invited to do. Then follow your emotional clarity before investing your time, attention, and energy in any relationship or in any business or in any endeavor. Your power skills are best leveraged towards small or large business growth as an advisor to empower others' direction, creativity, and vision. Now, where that energy is grounded is in the gate eight. This is holding together the gate of contribution. Here we have the basic worth realized in contributing individual efforts towards group goals. The fifth line is about Dharma. You are learning about how holding together does not exclude eventual separation. Successful union after a proper term will encourage separation. The fledgling, once mature, is expected to leave the nest. This is right action which does not harm the integrity of the union. So as your design has the fixing into the exaltation, this reads the teacher, contribution as a part of a process of sharing that accepts and expects limitation, exemplified in teaching. Now sometimes this can show up in the detriment based on what transits you're moving through, or what people you are encountering or partnering with. So this shows up as the parent that cannot let go of the child, understanding only that its authority is being challenged. So contribution as an end in itself that neither accepts nor expects limitation, exemplified by the parent that cannot let go of the child. Now to go a little bit deeper into your specificities, your gate eight characteristics show that your creative contribution is grounded through teaching and preaching. Your public display of your own specific style, direction, and creations is designed to have a resonance with feeling or an attunement to practicality and you are designed to empower and publicly display or promote other people's work when you are recognized, invited, and emotionally clear. Your design should feel inspired by those things which are unique, novel, and innovative. Your impact is through putting out the call for others to be attracted to those things that you find attractive. When you are in the mood, you constantly find yourself attracting other people's attention to what you are marketing or promoting, grounding your call to the practicality of this direction in an unconsciously seductive way. Once you get people's attention, you can lead by example. If others resonate with your voice, they may follow your example. 
Your leadership mutates and empowers others' creativity and shifts the collective's orientation over time. Now, the leadership path of recognizing and displaying what is unusual and unique can be a lonely one, as you first must be, again, recognized, invited to publicly display and endorse what you know to be of value when you are clear. So you are a heretic that can cool everybody down with the feeling of your attunement to passively leading by example. Another way we can say this is you are a heretical priestess of feeling. Now, the nodes are how you see on the personality consciousness side. And on the design side, it's what you resonate to with where you be. So this is a stage upon which you can fulfill your life's purpose or your life's work. This is the line of geometry where you came from and where you are going. The reason I include this especially is because this is where you're going to fulfill your life's work. This is with whom you have a karmic connection to. So when you see the elements of this, when you are resonating to this, being in the environment, the path that you're walking, what you are experiencing as you walk this path through life, or the way that you are attuned to seeing or how you personally see and express your potential for awareness, then you know you're in the right place. Lavina, here's the way that you're designed to see. Your personality nodes are the view of your perspective. The north node for you represents where you are going. It's actually where you are right now because you are 46. Your shift happened at 44, so it's the way you're designed to see after your 44th, at your 44th year. So gate 32 is the gate of duration. It's the gate of continuity. The south node is where you came from, the way that you were designed to see before 44. And this is gate 42 increase, the gate of growth. Now the 42nd gate is that end in the beginning, middle, and end of cycles of experience. It is this ability through the nodes to be able to see that everything has an end. It's also seeing how difficult it is for those that you're looking at to be able to finish things. One of the gifts of the 42nd gate when it looks out into the world is that it looks out on the capacity of humans to finish what they start. So you're able to see, perceive, can they finish what they start with your personal perspective. So you're looking out at the vitality. This is an energy resource gate the force, the energy system of that sacral generated world around you. And you're looking at who has the energy to take things to the finish. You're always able to see who's not doing their thing, which isn't necessarily pleasant for those who get caught in your vision, because you can see those that are not giving their all of their energy to something on the other side. Now in the 32, we have this deep, deep basic fear. It is the fear of failure. You are learning to see what can and cannot endure. Gate 32 in the node sees that there is no such thing as stability. 32s are quite conservative. So when you're looking out at the world with 32 eyes, you have to see that you're looking not only at those that have potential, but you're looking at the potential of those who judge the potential, the potential awareness of other people's fulfillment, potentially, on the material plane, the ambition of those who want to rise up and make something of themselves in the stream of capitalism. So you're seeing this whole frame all the way down the line of circuitry. What can and cannot be supported? 32 is about seeing the potential for failure and the fears of failure that people hold on to. So you're designed to be sensitive to those things that are going to destroy your tribe, the failure of your tribe. If the tribe fails, 
all of its members fail. And the 42 will look out, seize the potential of whether there is a full commitment there to take it through to the completion. Now the south node where you came from, or where you were before 44 years of age, is the 27th gate. This is caring, a gate of nourishment or compassion. You are designed to begin with nurturing and caring in the environment, and that it is going to lead you into the transitoriness of power and influence. The environment was designed to have this quality of caring and the value of nurturing. Enhancement of the quality and substance of all activities through caring would have been the stage of your life in the first part of your life. So aligning to the value of caring and nurturing in the first part of your life is going to lead you into the transitoriness of power and influence. So Lavina, to wrap this up, I'm going to be synthesizing aspects of your design. Your life's fulfillment is designed to come through strategic creative partnerships and leadership in collaboration through working with entrepreneurial individuals and small teams. You are on a path of guiding others through their highest calling of purpose and helping them to see things from a place of tranquility through your personal perspective about what you've learned on this material plane. Remember to teach from the mistakes you've made in learning through trial and error about what can help us resolve our fears of dying without achieving our purpose in life and soothe the fear of failure, material failure that people have about their career ambitions. You are designed to sell others on quitting, over committing, just saying yes to everything, and also to just doing things for the money. Instead, you are a partner in their success to help them align to their life's passions and purpose with profitability, leading the way for those who recognize you as a guide who can empower them to generate true wealth. Lavina, I trust you have enjoyed this exploration into your life's work. Remember to enjoy the remembrances, savor the experiences as you walk this path. Enjoy the journey along the way to find the fulfillment of the sweet success that you were born for. If you have any questions or needs for further clarifications, you are welcome to contact my office at humandesignlifecoaching.com and I look forward to connecting with you along the way in sharing the journey of learning, experience, and discovery. Namaste.